Welcome to leveraging IPSLA using SysCorps LMS for network and application performance. If you're wondering why is there a need for IPSLA, then there are several reasons for having that. If you look at the results of you know reduced business productivity or you know, network cost or understanding network behavior, uh, these can all be tied to either the performance uh, uh, impact or maybe the efficiency or bandwidth uh, utilization and or network traffic. So these are some of the reasons why you need to look at IPSLA and see how it can really help you. So how does IPSLA really work? Um, you really have a source device from which an IPSLA packet will be generated and will be transmitted to the target device. Now the target device could be either an IP address or a Cisco router. That's where it will be seen. It will be reflected back to the source device and the source device will figure out whether the target reported success of the packet and if so, you know, what was the round trip delay. So for example, if the packet is leaving the source router, it comes back to the source router, it figures out the latency and that is what gets reported and we should be able to uh, get the latency time for that. What you've seen here is a slide that depicts all the applications and metrics and protocols that can be used with IPSLA. So as you can see, it's very wide in nature. It can generate a lot of protocols and it can give you very rich, you know, metrics, uh, for, for example, the round trip delay or the packet loss, network jitter, loss of statistics, connectivity, and so forth. And it can be used for a wide variety of applications like the availability, network performance monitoring, voice or IP, troubleshooting, ETLS, and so forth. So let's see how an IPSLA can actually be used in real life. What, what does it take to really deploy IPSLA and start using it uh, you know, to get uh, all the performance stats you want. First of all, you need to have a very good network baseline, and that is what IPSLA helps you with. It helps you verify the network readiness if you're deploying a new service, for example, voice or IP, or maybe um, some of your you know web service or FTP or what have you. Once you have that, you can understand or have a better understanding of your baseline, and you can have more confidence when actually trying to deploy your new services. You can then try to fine tune and see um, if there's any way you can improve those statistics. And after you do that, you can quantify the results uh, either from a user or you know by doing your own testing and see uh, if it makes sense. If not, you can go back to the network baseline and, and try to tweak some more. So this is the normal IPSLA lifecycle. So now that we know what IPSLA is all about, let's see how Cisco's LMS can help you ease your um, IPSLA deployment as well as getting some monitoring and reporting out of it. For example, Cisco LMS can actually um, support multiple protocols. For example, it can you know, um, look at the DHCP server and see how the DHCP server is performing. Uh, so the LMS can configure the source router which can then send out the DHCP packets and then get the stats back into the LMS. Similarly, you can take a look at how your web server is performing or maybe how your uh, voice deployment is going on. You can actually send a UDP or RTP packet to a remote uh, Cisco router and you can see how the statistics are uh, through your network. You can also take a look at any particular ICMP uh, packet uh, and you can send it across any IP address, not just a Cisco device, and you can see what the latency or availability looks like. And the same thing can be uh, done for any MTLS network or you can even uh, have your DNS server and see how that is performing with or without the cache. Uh, you can similarly take a look at the any TCP port. Uh, so you can make this very generic in nature. For example, any database port or any other port you can do. So LMS will support all of the uh, probes that are in iOS 12.4t train, which has a lot of choices for different ways of measuring your services and performance through your network. LMS Portal uh, 3.1 gives you a very good way of managing and looking at what IP surveys are either configured on the devices or are deployed in the network. For example, if you have an NHOP view that's configured with one device in mind, you can probably right click on it, you can uh, show properties. You would be able to see what this device is, get more information on it. And then if you right click on it, you should be able to jump right into and see how many collectors you have running for on this particular device. So that takes you directly into a filtered view that gives you more information on what the, what how many collectors are running in your network for on this particular device. 
So I have about three particular uh, ATSLA probes that are running on this device. So now I can select either each one of these probes and I can either do a quick monitoring that will bring me up a real time monitoring or I can click on multiple of these and I can overlay a graph based on their basic you know, latency. So you can do a lot of things directly from the screen here. So going back on the main portal, you can see what are your top um, latencies. For example, if I click on this one, it will take me directly to a you know, real-time monitoring of this particular probe, and it's going to be updated every 60 seconds. So we'll come back to it and see how that goes. But uh, let's go a little bit more here. So I can get a quick availability dashboard here. I can see which probes are enabled or not. I can see how many probes are running right now. So then I click on it, it will take me to a screen that shows me all of my running probes. Uh, and, you know, you can mix and match this with any of the views that you have created using the latest you know, LMS portal. Okay, let's talk a little bit more about reporting. How can we get more historical reporting you know, within these discourse LMS? So once you go into the IP and Linux Performance Monitor Report and Report Archives, you can quickly select your user defined probes. Uh, say for example, I wanted to get a last one month history on this guy on the daily UDP jitters that I'm getting. So if I click on Generate Reports, and of course I select uh, all of these right here, and the Generate Report on it, and I should be quickly able to see all of my uh, numbers here. And if I click on Graph, I should be able to see what kind of graph it generates. So that should give me a very um, good information on you know, what my UDP jitters look like. So I can see that I have a lot of positive jitters here. And if I try to want to see, you know, what happened here, why did the jitter decrease here or maybe increase the rest of the time, I can correlate that with the latency. So I can see that it, it directly is affected by the latency. And I can also see that I have some errors at the, main, at the same time. So you can do some really good correlation with it. Thanks for your time and hoping you can join back again in the next round of LMS webinars.